the instrument, I want you to put your right hand on your chest and say, I will, I will. not be silent, not be silent. But, I will but I will always worship the Lord. Say, this is my worship. Say, oh Lord, receive my worship. Father, we lift our hands to worship and praise you. That we will not allow anything to stop us in serving and in praising you. Have your way with us, oh Lord. In Jesus' name. Someone shout a believing amen. Give the Lord a clap offering and please be seated. Uh, the choir, it looks as if uh, uh, um, you, you, you were in my spirit yesterday in the night. The title of my message is I Will. <laughs> and uh, from Tuesday, this message has been ringing in my spirit. And I had the message, but how to put them together took me a lot of time. And... Uh, uh, Whilst I was doing that, this song came to my spirit. That after, when I, before I preach this message, I will sing that song. I will not be silent. And uh, even though the message has nothing to do with worship, it also has a bearing with it, though. But I'm talking about our will. Amen? The theme for this year, our focus for this year as a church is I will build my church. Everybody say, I will build my church. Let me hear you from you. Let me hear your voice. Say, I will build my church. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, the Bible said, And I say unto you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen? So that is our focus for this, um, this year. Amen? And uh, we'll be, I'll be teaching, I will build my church, but I am breaking the whole thing in pieces. Amen? I am handling, I will. The next phase we will do, build, and the next phase we will do, my church, so that you understand what is your church and things like that. Amen. Amen. Before we go into the word of God, I want us to appreciate the presence of my senior brother, the Reverend Ebenezer Bayuko, <laughs> worshiping with us this Sunday morning. Amen. God bless you for coming, and God bless you too for coming. Amen. Good. Let's pray. Father, the entrance of your word gives life and understanding unto the simple. Touch these lips of clay. Use it to touch the hearts of your people. Stay up faith in your people that they will miss it with your word and we shall receive the blessings thereof. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, I will. will. Oh, speak, shout it loud and say, I will. will. Shout like you believe it. Say, I will. will. Even with the face, no smile, we can still hear you talk. Say, I will. will. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. He said, For if there be first a willing mind First, a willing mind. First, a willing mind. It is accepted according to that a man has and not according to that he has not. If there is first, a willing mind. So, the first thing we need in life, in our work with God, is a willing mind. If when God created you and I, he gave us a will. As young as a two hour or a ten minute born baby 
it's still, he, he, he or she has a will. He can choose to cry. He, it, he can choose to not to feed. He can choose to say, I will not take this breast milk. A child as young as he may be, not knowing right from wrong, has a will to choose what he wants and what he does not want. Has a will to choose what he likes and he does not like. Are we together? The will is the faculty of the mind that selects, enables deliberate decision and desirable actions. The will is the faculty of the mind. Why am I saying, why, why, why are we saying the will is the faculty of the mind? Because every human being, you are made up of three components. I'm going to say three components. Now, you are a body. Say, I am, say, I am a body. I have Okay, let, let, me, let, 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 me, let me do it in the order of importance, okay? Are we together? Say, I am a spirit. Say, I am a spirit. And I live in a body. And I have a soul. Are I, 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 I getting it? So, you are not the body physically sitting there. You are a spirit. And the container in which you are living is the body. And you have the soul. Are we together? Inside your soul, we have your mind. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Inside your soul, we have your mind. Okay? And inside your mind, we have three elements that determines who you really are. And the first element is your will. And when we are talking about your will, we are talking about your desire. And the second one, the second element is your intellect. When you are talking about your intellect, we are talking about your knowledge, the ability to acquire information and learn. And the third one is your emotions. And when you are talking about your emotions, we are talking about your feelings. Are we together? These three components are found in your mind, and your mind is found in your soul, and your soul is part of your being. Alright? So we said that your will is the faculty of your mind. That, uh, that selects and enables you to make deliberate decisions and desirable actions. In fact, the action, the, the act of deliberacy is in the will. Actions are functions of the will. Are we together? Are we together? So everybody has a will. So far as you can make a, make a, so far as you can make a decision, okay? The dress you wore this morning is a function of a will. The, 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 the food you ate this morning is a function of a will. Uh, and sometimes we do some things outside our will. There's sometimes you have a willingness to do something, but the ability to execute that which is within your will is, take, is not there. Are you following? So the Bible said, in building the church, when Jesus said, I will build my church, the first thing he wants us to bring us is to, the first point he wants us to bring us to understand was the point of the mind. That was in the mind. Yeah. That's how come when Jesus started preaching, he started preaching and he said, repent. The word repent means change your thinking, change the pattern of your thinking and change the condition of your mind. Change your perception and change your reception. The mind. In fact, if there's anything Jesus came to do, he came to change our mind. I'm not communicating at all. He came to change our mind. He came to ch change our mind about life, our mind about God, our mind about our neighbors. So when you read the Bible very well, you realize that everything Jesus said and did was a way of making us see things differently, think things differently, and understand things differently, and appreciate things differently. You can't say you are a Christian and you are, you are thinking the same way that the unbelievers think. Why? Because the Bible said that as, as a man thinketh, uh -huh, continue, so you see, we are no more different from, 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 from our, our thoughts. In fact, the Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, it means that you can think in your heart. Are we together? Are we together? Yeah. So God said, I will, because he said that this is my desire, this is my selection, and this is my, my, my decision. And my decision is that I am going to build my chair. And ladies and gentlemen, whatever Jesus said was also, he also said it for us so that we too can also stand up and say the same thing that I also will build. See, this year you must make a deliberate decision to build your
your spiritual life, to build your financial life, to build your relational life, to build all the components of your life. I will. I will. When Jesus said, I will, there were seven things he wanted us to learn and do. And I call it the seven powers of I will that builds a church. Number one. Number one. The first power of I will is what I call the willingness to follow. Ever said the willingness to follow? Oh, let me hear. Ever say the willingness to follow? Genesis, Genesis chapter 24, verse 5. Genesis chapter 24, verse 5. And the servant said unto him, Per adventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. But I need to bring your son again unto the land from whence thou comest. This is. This is Abraham sending the servant to go and look for a, a, a wife for, the, for, for Isaac. And the servant said, so far as when I go and I meet this lady and he said, he's not, he's not willing to follow me. What should I do? Should I just come back to you and tell you? And Abraham told me that when he, this woman is not willing to come to, with you and follow you to, to come and uh, marry my son, then the oath or the covenant that I'll make with you, you are free from it. And you have to understand that this, this, this is a serious issue because with the woman that the servant is going to select for the wife does not know where this servant is coming from. Are we together? He does not know where he's coming from. And even if he knows, he has not been there before. And he may not know whether what the servant is telling the truth or not. But he said, per adventure, this woman will not be willing to follow me. What, what does what that the New Testament say? Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. And Jesus said unto them, follow me and I will. Follow me and I will. Follow me and I will make you. So the making is in the, you see, the will of God in the making of your life eh, is in the unwillingness to follow. Hello? Yeah. It is in your willingness to follow. It is your willingness to follow the word of God. Your willingness to follow the instructions of your pastor. Yes. You may be older than him. You may be more richer than him. You may be, you may be beautiful and handsome than him. You may be more intellectually uh, uh, astute than him. You may have a lot of things more than him. But so far as he stands in the ways of God and is leading you in the ways of God, you have to open up your heart and be willing to follow. Willing to follow. Willing to follow. And he said, he said unto them, follow me. Follow me. Oh Lord Jesus, follow me. Hmm. Follow me. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto Jesus, Ah, Lord, we have left everything to follow. One of the, one of the requirements of following God eh, is leaving everything. Everybody say leaving everything. Yeah, because if you refuse to leave those things, those things will hold you down and it will, it will not enable you to follow God. Those contraband goods, those weights. Hebrews chapter 12. Seeing then that we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside every sin and the weight. That so, that so easily beset us. And let us run the race with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and it is set at the right hand of the majesty on high. Follow God. Anybody that tells you that this is the ways of God, you must be willing to follow. And especially when your pastor tells you that this is the ways of God, don't say I won't. Come for prayer, you are there. Come for fasting, you are there. Come for Bible study, you are there. Pay your tithes, you are there. Give an offering, you are doing it. And pay your pledges and your thanksgiving, you are doing because all these instructions that you follow are meant for your own good and for your own blessings. Are we together at all? Peter said to Jesus. We have left everything. In fact, when, when Peter said, I have left everything, he desired, he, he, he's willing to say that. Because number one, Peter left his ship. Peter has a ship. He had a profession. Peter had a family. And when you, when, when you, calculate, when you look at it very carefully, Peter's profession was something that was given to him from his fathers. So Peter has to leave the profession of the father. Peter has to leave the inheritance of the father. And he also has to leave his own profession. Number two, Peter had a wife at the time Jesus met him. 
Bible scholars say that Peter was older than Jesus. It is true. So Peter had a wife and the third Jesus met him and this man has left the wife. This man has left the children. In every way, it was the profession and the work of Peter that feeds the mother-in-law who was living in the house and that feeds the wife and the children. So Peter leaving the profession means that the children will suffer, the wife will suffer, they will go on hunger, hunger strike. At times they may be rejected and ejected from society and from the, and from the place that they stay. So when Peter looked at all these things, he said there's a price to pay in following God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to follow God, there must be a price you are supposed to pay. I'm not talking to somebody here. You must pay the price of leaving some friends alone so that you can serve God and follow God. You must pay the price uh, to bring that money that is in your account for the advancement of the things of God. And Peter said, I've left everything, Lord. I am not seeing top. I'm not seeing anything. My friends are advancing. Look at my classmates. They are doing so well. And there's nothing going on in my life. Lord, if I left everything to follow you, uh, what is my benefit? What is my reward? Uh, what am I going to receive from you? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is a reward in following God. Am I talking to somebody? David said, uh, I've been young and I've been old, uh, and I've not seen the righteous forsaken. Not, not his seed begging for bread. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you follow God with all your heart and with all your might and mind, uh, you will not beg for bread. Am I communicating to somebody? Jesus said, No crime, no crime. Say, was say, very, very, I say unto you, uh, there is no man that has left a house. Uh, let your brothers and your sisters, you left your mother and you left your father, and this is very painful. He said, A man can never leave the wife uh, because God does not like divorce. But you say, If you are capable and strong enough uh, and more courageous enough uh, to turn your back even to your wife uh, and to your children, uh, am I talking to somebody? You bought the land, the land is so expensive. You forsook your land to follow me. He said, uh, You did this thing to follow me and to the gospel. I have a good news for somebody. He said, You shall receive uh, when you lose something for God. Uh, you shall receive, uh, and he said, You shall receive an hundredfold. Uh, Somebody is receiving a hundredfold uh, because you lose something for the Lord. Uh, you shall receive a hundredfold now, not in heaven, uh, now in this time. Uh, houses, brothers, sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, uh, and even it will come with an accusation and persecution because I, the Lord, has rewarded you when you decided to follow me with all your hearts. And in the way to come, eternal life. Follow. You must be willing to follow. Everybody say, I will follow. Challenge them, that man in your mouth, mouth. Because if you are willing to follow, it is seen in your actions. Trust it. Do you have that? If you say you are a Christian and you are willing to follow God, ah, you should be seen. Your quiet time, you don't joke with it. Your prayer time, you don't joke with it. You will not even joke with your tithes. Christians are very good people to pray, but we are very bad people to pay our tithes. Tell me. Tell me. Anybody who can follow God with his heart, leaving his money behind, you are not ready to follow. Say, I'll follow. Say, I'll follow. Say, I'll follow. Yeah. We are not taking you into the house. We are not taking you to the, into the gate. We are not taking you to the fire. But one thing I've seen about God, eh? If you choose to follow God, wherever he takes you is a blessing. Because you know what? Heaven is where Jesus really is. Wherever Jesus wants to take us, you see, Saka Yesu Kraka say heaven, no one no more. We still choose to follow him. Am I communicating to somebody? Yes. The second wind. The second power of our will. Are we, are, are we together at all? So I wish I can stand here and, and finish with this. But let me move on to point number two. The second power of our will is the willingness to give offerings. We say the willingness to give offerings. Yeah. Yeah. The willingness. The truth of the matter is that when you really follow God well, you'll be willing to give offering. Yeah. The willingness to give offering. And when you're talking about the willingness to give offering in this church, I talked to you some years ago that we, we do in our offerings, we call it tops. Everybody say tops. T O P S. The first T is tight. The second O. The O is offerings. The P is pledges. And the S is seed so make a pledge and not honor your pledge. Because I'm a cake Christian, I come to church and I'm giving coins as an offering. At this stage of your life, give one city as an offering. Ha! It's a sign that you're not ready to follow God. At this level of your life, God has preserved and protected you and hold you 
kept you all through 2020 up to 2021. You have not made your mind to change and pay your tithe. And when he asked, why are you not paying your tithe? He said, somebody on the television told me that tithe is not in the Bible. Yes. When somebody on television told you that prayer is not in the Bible, you, told, you said the person is, is lying. When somebody on television told you that worship is not in the Bible, you said that person is lying. When somebody in the Bible, in the, in, on television told you that communion is not in the Bible, communion is not the thing that you are supposed to do, you said the person is lying. But when the person said money, paying tight, it's not biblical. That time you accepted it. Because that is where your heart is. If you cannot break your heart from the, from the from covetous and from the love of money, you are not ready to follow God. Are we together at all? Are we together? Genesis chapter 25 verse 2. Second Chronicles chapter 35 verse 8. Second Chronicles chapter 35 verse 8. He said, and his princes gave willingly unto the people, to the priests, and to the Levites. Micaiah and Zachariah and Jehiel, rulers of the house of God, gave unto the priests for the Passover offerings 2,600 small cattle and 300 oxen. They gave. They gave. First Chronicles chapter, chapter 29. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 6. He said, Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and hundreds of hundreds with the rulers of the king's way offered willingly. You can look at the people that offered willingly. The chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's way. They offered what? They gave a willing offering. Need a guest speaker to encourage you before you give. No, no. The get willing. Look, verse 7. And get for the service of the house of God. Are we together? Whatever money they gave, eh, the money was used to service the house. Do you really understand the word service? Do you understand the word service? Service means you, you, it is used to buy a chair, it is used to pay ECG bill, it is used to buy TV screens, it is used to buy sound system, it is used to build uh, uh, auditoriums, it is used to fix the uh, things that are destroying, it is used to pay people that are working in the house of God. They gave the money for the service. Are we together? Are we together? The Bible said they were willing to give for the service. To give for the service of the house of God. And look at what they give. Look at what they give. He said, for the house of God, of gold, 5,000 talents and 10,000 drams of silver. 10,000 talents and of brass, 18,000 talents and 100,000 100, talents of iron. And they, with whom precious stones were found, gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel, the Jeshonite. Then the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly because with perfect heart they offered willingly. With perfect heart they, perfect, they, they offered what? Willingly. And I, I love verse 9. He said, the beginning of verse 9, he said, they rejoiced when they offered willingly. We don't give offering and squeeze your gift. Hello? I mean, I didn't want to give. The way the pastor spoke, and I, uh, then I decided to do it. We don't do that. They give because it is in our giving eh, that the work of God will advance. Are we here at all? Are we together? Hmm. To the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Wherefore, David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. The word bless is not talking about blessing God. It's talking about praising God. When the people give, the leader of the people at that time, who is David, was so happy to serve God and also to worship God. Yeah. Yeah. Your tithe makes this work possible. Are we together? Yeah, you, you are in a church that do not take advantage of people's money. You are, you are, you are part of an organization where everything is well accounted for. Other tests will come and, will come and audit everything that we do. And, and you, are, you are in a church that we preach in the whole counsel of God. You are in the church that we don't say oil. You are in the church that we don't say handkerchief. You are in the church that anytime you want to see the pastor, you will see him. And you also have to do your part by willingly deciding, deciding it. That I will give my tithes. Even the 
you know, do you know what most of what, what you do? You chop all your money, then you begin to think, hey, so where's the tax? They left it some few. Mm, okay, let me give it like that. If you give it like that, God will also you to look at you like that. Am I communicating? You see, you must make that, you must have that willing heart uh, to change for today. Nobody can change you. On when the word of God comes and opens your eyes and your understanding, then you must make your mind and be willing in your heart. For the Bible said these people were willing in their hearts. Are we, we together at all? Are we together at all? Yeah. Your life and money, which one, which, which one is important? Who can answer? Which one is important? I, I come to you and said, there are two things in your life. I want to take them. I want to, your life and your money. Give me one of them. Which one will you give me? Yes? You give me your money. It is not true. It's not true. Because if you don't pay your time, you are telling God that you give your life. You don't give your money. Because your money is more important to you than life. And God is telling you that I am part of your life. I am the one that is taking care of your life. So this one tenth of all your earnings. One tenth. No, it's not taking 90%. One tenth. Uh, and people are talking rubbish. And tithe is this, tithe is that, tithe is this, tithe is that, tithe is this. And we also, we listen to them and swallow them. And so when even the willingness is coming, because of what you have heard, that righteous Job, sitting and hearing the unrighteous things, versus righteous soul from the things he heard day by day. So when you sit among these who are not Christians, and they are criticizing pastors, pastors are thieves, pastors are talatans, but when you look at me, I don't look like a thief. I am not. I don't look at, I don't look at the thief. I'm not. No, I will not come and manipulate you and take your money. Be quiet, I will give you money. No. No. This is the time to give. Everybody say, I will. And I will give. Say, from today, I will give good offering. Say, like you believe it all. Say, I will pay my tithe. Even if I have to go hungry, I'll pay my tithe. That's why you didn't say. Say it. Even if I have to go hungry, I will still pay my tithe. To save the devil. Yeah. I don't say they say shape. Say, to save the devil. Say it. Yes, yes, yes. Because yeah. some of you, the devil will not come and destroy because you realize you have already destroyed because you're taking God's portion. <laughs> Are we together? Are we together? They gave willingly. They gave willingly. They gave willingly. The third one, my time is up. The third one. Let me do the third one so that we are good to go. The third one. The, 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 the third power of our will is the willingness to serve the interest of the Lord and the interest of his word. The, in, the willingness. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Chapter 28, verse 9. And you, Solomon, my son, and you, my daughter, and you, my son, and you, the child of God, and you, a daughter of God, and you, a child of God, a son of God, not you, the God of your father, and serve him with the perfect heart. Serve God with what? A perfect heart. Not with a divided heart. Not with a twisted heart, a twisted mind. Serve God with a perfect heart. Yeah. Serve God. With a perfect heart. And with a willing mind. Be willing in your mind. 28 verse 9. With a willing mind. Be deliberately willing in your mind. Make a conscious decision and the effort in your mind. Why? Because the Lord sets all the hearts. And he understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. The word imagination or the thought means the pictures of your thinking. If you seek him, you, he will be fine of you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. First of all, 21. 21. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. Even and behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with you for all the service of the house of the Lord. 
and there shall be with thee for all manner of work, Matthew, every willing, every willing, skillful man, every willing, skillful man is for the service of God. Every willing, skillful, you are, you are skillful in sweeping. It is for the service of God. You are skillful in, in talking to people, encouraging people. It is for the service of God. You are skillful in playing as an instrument. It is for the service of God. You are skillful in doing something for, for people. It is for the service of the house of God. In the book of Leviticus, he said that, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless. And he will bless your bread and your wine. When you serve, God will bless. When you serve, God will bless. God will bless. One of the easy ways to assess the blessings of God is to serve God. Do something for God, sir. Serve God. Don't come and be, be good at the Musa. Is that what they call it? At the Musa. Is that what they call it? Or whatever they call it. Pew warmer. No. Do something for God. They told Jerry, Jerry, do something before you die. And he really did something before you die. You also have to do something before you die. Because definitely you will die. Someday. Are you following? Are you following? For any manner of service, also the princes and all the people will be holy at your command. Let me, let me carry short. Let me carry it short. Let me carry it short. So you must be willing. As you must be what? You must be what? As you must be what? Going back to our beginning scripture, Second Corinthians 8, verse 4. Second Corinthians 8, verse 4. Number one, the first thing we need to we need in this year is a willing man. If there be first a willing man. So to be able to follow God, you must have that willingness. To be able to give your offering, your tithes, and your pleasure, and sow your seed, and all that, you must have the willing man. Are we together? Yes. The willingness to serve. What are you doing for God? What are you doing for money? You've been in this church for all these years. What are you doing for God? 2020, 2020, 2021 has come. What are you doing? Somebody, Jesus healed, healed a man, and the man said, Jesus, I want to follow you and do something. He said, go, go and do something. There's something that you are supposed to do. If there be first a willing man, the Bible says, it is accepted according to that a man has, not according to that which he has not. I didn't finish all the powers, but let me bring this one to conclusion. When you are talking about willingness, one of the strongest points I have to bring to account to your attention is the willingness to receive Jesus into the ship of your life. And we say the willingness, ship of your life. Yeah, John chapter 6, verse 21. Then they, John 6, 21, then they willingly, then they then agapacity willingly, then we willingly receive Jesus into the ship. And look at the beautiful thing that they have. The Bible said that the moment they receive Jesus into the ship, they, they got into their destination automatically. Where are you going in 2021? I'm going to do my business. That's where you are going. I'm going to marry. That's where you are going. I'm going to buy a land. That's where you are going. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to school. That's, that, yes, it is true. You are going there. But the Bible said you have to receive Jesus into that life. The things you want to do, receive Jesus into it first. When you receive Jesus into it, you will navigate your life into that place without struggle, without accidents and coincidence. Am I talking to somebody at all? They willingly receive Jesus. They willingly receive Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3. For to their power, I bear record, and yet and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. They were, they were what? Willing of what? They were willing of themselves. Praying us with much entreaty that we will receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. The ministering to the saints. The serving of the saints. Serving the saints. Serving. Take upon us the fellowship of the serving of the saints. And this they did. What, what did they do? This they did. This one. This thing I'm talking about. The Bible said they did it. The willingness to allow Jesus into their life. This they did. This they did. Not as we hope, but first they gave their own self to the Lord. So the first thing they did is that they gave themselves to the Lord. They received Jesus into their life. And then also they gave themselves unto us by the will of God. The meaning of they gave themselves unto us by the will of God means is that they, 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 they obeyed our instructions by the will of God. Listen, if, if, if you are working with any person that you do not obey his instructions, it's better you don't work with him. You have a husband, you don't listen to his instructions. You have a wife, you don't listen to his instructions. You have a boss, you don't listen to his instructions. You have a pastor, you don't listen to his instructions. It's better you leave him. Because the instructions you obey determines the, the, the picture of your future. 
Are we together? Are we together? This they did. This they did. The second thing I want to bring to your attention in conclusion is that when they had the willingness to receive Jesus, they also had the willingness to preach and evangelize. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16 to 18. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this willingly, if I do this willingly, everybody say, I will do this willingly. Say, I will do this willingly. What is the thing that you say you will do willingly? Say, if I do this willingly, it's the preaching of the gospel. Talking to people about Jesus. Bringing people to the house of God. Serving, uh, leading people to church. Making sure that people are rooted and grounded in the things of God. The Bible said, this thing I will do willingly. I will pray willingly. I will fast willingly. I will pay my tithe willingly. I will give my offering willingly. I will follow Jesus willingly. I will serve the Lord willingly. I will do whatever the Lord wants me to do willingly. I will obey the instructions of my leaders and my pastors willingly. This thing I will do willingly. For if I do this when I told you initially that we have a reward. He said, I have a reward. But if it is against, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me. It means that even if I don't feel like doing it, I will still do it anyway. I will do it anyway for the sake of the gospel that has been committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. The willingness to preach, the willingness to evangelize, the willingness to bring people to the house of God, the willingness to invite uh, invite people to the house of God. Two things I want to leave up with, to leave with you. Two things I want to leave with you. As the Lord permits you to be alive and works in you daily by His grace and mercy, you must be willing to do whatever He instructs you without murmuring, without murmuring, without murmuring. Are we together? You must be willing to do whatever He instructs you. Without memory. Hebrews chapter 6, verse, verse, verse 3. And this we will do if God permits. <laughs> and this we will do. He said, he said, leaving the elemental principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us, let us come unto perfection, not lying, not, is it, not lying again, uh, repentance from dead words, from, from, uh, 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 from eternal judgment, from laying, laying of hands, and from the resurrection of the dead, and things like that. He said, this we will do if God permits. This, everybody said, this. I will do if God permits. Yeah. Do you know what it means? It means that if God allows you to see the next one hour, he has permitted you to do the things I'm telling you. This I will do. What are you supposed to do? Follow God. Serve God. Do something for God. Evangelize. Preach. Huh? Allow Jesus into your life. And be willing to give your offering. And pay your tithe. Be faithful with your tithe and your money matters. This I will do. Why? Why is he saying that this I will do if God permits? Because Philippians 2, verse 13 to 14 said, For it is God who works in you, both to will. So God works in you to have the willingness to do of his good pleasure. Therefore, do all things without memory and complaining. Philippians 2, verse 13 to 14. Do all things without memory and what? Complaining. Because it is God who is enabling you. Because it's the grace of, and the mercy of God that is available to you, do everything without memory and complaining. I pray for you that the, the Lord God that we serve will first give you a willing heart in, in doing this that he has permitted you to live for. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Stand to your feet and let's pray. Oh, Jesus. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I'm happy that nobody clapped their hands. Don't clap. Don't clap. I'm happy nobody clapped them because it means that you are getting what I'm talking about. So that you preach and people will clap the message away. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Say, I will allow Jesus into my life. I will follow his instructions. Say, I will follow God. Say, I will follow God with all my heart. I will give for the advancement of the cause of Christ. I will serve with all my mind and with all my strength. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Begin to pray for 30 seconds. Lift your hands. Receive my worship. Lift your hands and begin to pray. Lift your hands and begin to pray. I will. I will. I will. I will. 
In the name of Jesus. Everybody, everybody close your eyes. Those who want to pray for these people. The Bible said they were willing to receive Jesus. They willingly receive Jesus into their life. Yeah. Nobody has to force you. You must be willing to do that. I want to pray for anybody who wants to receive Jesus into your life this morning. You are not born again. That's what I'm talking about. Or you could be born again, but you have backslidden. Now, the things you enjoy, you realize that Christians are not supposed to enjoy that. Word pornography. You, you listen to worldly songs and you ask yourself, what is wrong with this? Somebody the other day said, uh, if the church, we, if the work we do is a secular job, then what is wrong for us to listen to secular songs? Then I will tell the person that, I, told the, I will t- also tell the person and said, uh, if the medication the doctors give to the patients are medicine enough, why don't the doctor themselves also drink it every day? Bible said, we are, we are in the world, but we are not of this world. Anyone who wants to allow Jesus into your life, you want to be born again. You want to make it to heaven with Jesus. I want to pray for such a person. If there's anybody like that, you can lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Anybody? I want everybody's eyes to close. I, this one is a personal decision you are making. And I want to pray for something. Such. Anybody who wants, to allow, who wants to allow Jesus into your heart. You want Jesus to come into your heart. You, you, want to, you are inviting Jesus into the life of your, into, into the ship of your life. Please, if you are starting that person, lift your hands. I want to pray. It's a personal thing you are doing. Nobody has needs to influence you. Don't even look at anybody, your friend, your brother, your sister, your wife, your whoever is came. No, no, that, no it's, it's a personal decision you are making. And God, it's going to determine whether you go to heaven or not. And as simple as it may seem, it's going to do something in your life. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. If you are lifting your hands, you can lift up your hands well. I want to pray for you. You just have to close your eyes. Everybody's eyes are closed because we do not want you to look at somebody for somebody to look out to you for you to feel that it is influencing you to lift up your hands. You have to think they willingly receive Jesus. And while they receive Jesus, the Bible said they entered into the book, into the, their destination. 2021 is a journey we have begun. Jesus with us in the, in, the, in, our, in our life we will reach our destination. Father, I pray for the brothers whose hands are lifted. Forgive their sins. Wash them with your blood. Mark their names in the last book of life. And let your name be glorified in them. In Jesus' name. We pray that for. They are going to give you some card. You are going to fill it. When you close service, I am going to meet you. You with it. And, and, and I am going to have a nice word with you. Now that you have taken this decision, you are supposed to grow in the things of God. You are supposed to mature in God. So that you will not fall again. Neither will you backslide again can still be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And Father, I pray that let your mercy prevail by your people. Let the blood of Jesus wash them. Let the blood of Jesus wash them. Let the blood of Jesus wash them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering.